G'day, thanks for dropping by. Today we're going to take you to the rocks area in Sydney. It's an historic site in uh, just near Circular Quay and there's a lot of history there to be told. So come along with us, but not you Bobby, and we'll have a bit of a look around. So come on, let's go. Come on Bob. Let's go. Come on Bob. So what you're looking at now is the uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art, but uh... that was previously known as the um, Maritime Building. They controlled all the um, shipping in Sydney Harbour. That's right. The museum was opened in 1991, as I said, as the Museum of Contemporary Art. Um, in 2010, it underwent a 58 million dollar expansion and redevelopment. So here we have the home of John Cadman. John came here in 1797 from England for stealing a horse. This was his home from uh, 1827 to 1845. He had worked on boats in England, so was put to work in the docks, where he continued to work and became a principal superintendent of government boats, which meant he was responsible for maintenance and availability of naval officers' boats and any government boats used by convicts for various activities and work on the harbour. Harbour Bridge. Sydney Opera House. Now here's something I didn't know about Jeff, the uh, Metcalf Bond stores. Um, they were um, they were known as the bond stores, where goods remained in the storage until importers paid the custom duty on them. They're currently um, renovating these buildings and they're trying to bring them back to the, um, the, the original type of building at the time. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, work going on, but uh, hopefully we'll film again uh, at a later stage and it'll be completed. Here's our Sydney Harbour Bridge. As you can see, there's climbers on top and uh, that's open to the public. Uh, anyone can climb it, and uh, we've both done that, haven't we, Jeff? Yeah, sure. And the cost—the cost of the climb is well worth it. Oh, the, well worth the it. The views of Sydney Harbour spectacular. Something you need to do once in your life, at least, even twice if you're able to. <laughs> Let's go. This is the Doors Point Battery. Uh, Jeff getting blown away here, and uh, it was. Uh, this is actually in Doors Point. So originally, this was an observatory constructed in 1788 by Lieutenant William Dawes. Um, in 1798, the governor's concern regarding the arrival of schooner um, prompted defensive measures at Battery. So George Barney, one of Australia's most important colonial engineers in the 19th century, uh, oversaw the construction and the site has been previously used as a cemetery for prisoners executed at Sydney Jail. So here we are at the Harbour View Hotel. It's the closest hotel to the Harbour Bridge. 
in, in the original um, Harbourview Hotel built around 1843 was demolished to make way for this current one that you're seeing now. Um, it was originally situated where the uh, granite pylons now stand. The foundations of the building you can still see uh, located at the entrance of Doors Point Park. The current owners purchased the uh, Harbour View in 1998 and closed it in 2000 to do some renovations. It's now heritage listed. Yeah, there's about 14 hotels throughout the Millers Point region, but this is one of the popular ones, and uh, especially by the military garrison of the air of the time. Um, so it was built of sandstone used from the Argyle Cut, uh, originally called the Young Princess. Now, legend has it the hotel was used by the sea captains to recruit new members. So unsuspecting patrons who drunk themselves silly were said to have been pulled through a trapdoor and carried through the underground tunnel to wait ships um, in nearby Walsh Bay. That's where the old saying Shanghai comes from, Wayne. I That's think. right, it is. So yeah, this is an interesting story and a really wonderful, um, well-preserved hotel. And wake up with a hangover on a ship. <laughs> this is Holy Trinity Church in Millers Point, also known as the Garrison Church. Um, it was the first military church built in the colony and it continues to be active uh, to this day, it's an Anglican church, uh, part of the Diocese of Sydney. It's located at the north end of Fort Street and surrounded by houses and terraces from the uh, Georgian and Victorian periods. The lead line windows here are magnificent and we're just showing you some of those. Um, the Garrison Church was planned as a meeting place convened by Reverend uh, William Calper in December uh, 1839. Cowper made a significant contribution to funding the church, stipulating that it be called the Holy Trinity. The land was granted for the church, an associated schoolhouse uh, by George Gibbs. The small adjoining hall was used as a school, and for a time it was the headquarters of the 30th Scottish Battalion. The good thing about the Anglican church is they have these comfy chairs at the back. We're walking down Argyle Street now. It was named after Governor Macquarie, after County Argyle in Scotland, the place where he grew up. The rocks were divided into, us, into separate communities, separated by this rugged, steep, rocky outcrop, which forms the ridge of the peninsula to the west of Sydney Cove. Now, building had taken place on either side of the ridge, uh, but people wishing to travel from one side to the other either had to uh, go the long way around Dawes Point or climb a series of uh, stairs which joined the eastern and western sections of Argyle Street. So the whole Argyle thing started in 1816. Governor Macquarie floated the idea of uh, cutting a passage through the rock face to join the east and the west uh, sections of the, of the rocks community. There were lots of complaints from England and Sydney uh, the Macquarie was wasting lots of funds on unnecessary public uh, utilities and Macquarie attempted to raise finance from local businesses but it fell on deaf ears. The program languished until 1843 when convict chain gangs began their assault on the rocks, rock face with whatever tools they could find. 21 years later the cut was completed and opened to traffic. What a feat for its time, Wayne. That was enormous, wasn't it? And the fact that it took from 1816 to uh, 1843 to get the whole thing happening. It's incredible. Mm. The Argyle stairs were built as part of the cut, which was widened to its present size on its western side around the turn of the 20th century. So 
So right now we're walking down the Argyle Terrace and uh, as you can see um, all these historic buildings are still in use and have done so and there's also some new ones as well but, but a lot of uh, this, this whole uh, area here is uh, the terraces are all original buildings. This is a very interesting statue. Uh, on one side we have a, um, a, a section that rec um, recognises the uh, convicts of the time and also on the other side is the soldiers. It's all made of sandstone and this is where they have the uh, rocks markets on the weekends. So here we are at the Orient Hotel and uh, you more than likely stumbled over this place or stumbled out of it. It's been a popular watering hole for Sydney siders and visitors since 1844. So the building began life as a butcher shop and butcher's house in 1843. Uh, it has a restaurant and uh, serves modern Australian dishes and international favourites. Yeah, I found uh, this place absolutely fascinating. This is Susanna Place. And uh, it's a terrace of four houses and a corner shop. And it's, survive it's the only surviving working class dwelling of its era. And it's unique in, having, unique in having a history of domestic occupancy since the 1890s. So it was built for Edward and Mary Riley in 1844, who arrived from Ireland with their niece Susanna in 1838. The brick and sandstone house featured a basement, kitchen and a backyard outhouse. The buildings which today house a museum on the um, working class history have survived numerous demolition threats, uh, especially in 1900 when a bubonic plague led to hundreds of neighbouring houses being knocked down. In a future episode we'll have a look through the museum, won't we? Yeah, I think we'll get, we're going to have to go through it and uh, explore. On a previous ghost tour of the rocks, um, we were told that at the back of Susanna Place, there's been a woman seen um, on various um, nights. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, we should uh, we should investigate that one as well. Yeah, yeah. It's a very old lamp on a lamp post, and uh, I'd say now it's uh, gas or kerosene. Uh, no, no, kerosene would have been the original. Oh, I think more so yeah. oil. They would have used oil, oil like whale. That's right. With a whale blood. Um, that's right. But, but yeah. And uh, it, it, it makes a nice backdrop because uh, there are a lot of wedding photos being done around this area. Very popular place for photographers and wedding shots. The hospital? So this is the home of the original Sydney Hospital. Yeah, it was located in this area. And that's the reason why it's called Nurses Walk. Then it was relocated to Macquarie Street. The rocks was once riddled with laneways connecting one section and level to another. Only a few of these narrow thoroughfares remain, but they reveal many secrets about the origins, growth and development of Australia's first colonial maritime village. By the middle of the 19th century, gracious two and three storey homes, boasting peacocks and deer in their gardens and sweeping views of the harbour, doted the higher ground, whilst below a maze of winding streets and narrow cobblestone lanes lined with rat-infested hovels, hotels, brothels, 
and warehouses were home to seafarers, cutthroats, prostitutes and working families. It had a reputation of being one of the roughest and toughest ports in the world. However, that all changed in 1900 when the bubonic plague swept through Sydney. The slums that had given the area its reputation were demolished and many of its notorious black alleys, nooks and crannies vanished into history. This is the fortune of War Hotel. It's a Sydney's oldest licensed hotel still operating and dates back to 1828. So it was, the first licensee was Samuel Terry, who was transported to Australia in 1801 for seven years for theft. Um, when his sentence finished, he made the most of his misfortune to establish his business. This is the fortune of War Hotel. It's, um, it's, it, to this day, it's retained its old world charm, um, but also has built, some, um, built a reputation amongst tourists, a very, very popular tourist uh, attraction. We come now to the Jack Monday mural. Um, born in 1929, uh, Jack was an Australian Union and environmental activist. He came to prominence during the 70s for leading the New South Wales Builders Labourers Federation in their famous green bands. We are at the Russell Hotel, a unique example of a 19th century Queen Anne style hotel. It features a picturesque Scottish baronial tower the three-storey hotel was built with roof shingles, rendered masonry, external walls with decorative string courses and other mouldings. The site was once part of the original Sydney Hospital. Well, we hope you enjoyed that our visit to the rocks. Um, if you'd like to see more of our videos, then please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate that. And give us a thumbs up if you really like this video. Thanks again. See you next time.